ladies and germs welcome to the last rights again thanks for watching if you have already thank you if you haven't give us a subscribe that'll be lovely different one today um i want to talk listen to the car <laughs> i am serious don't don't think that i can't be serious all right i've got a bit of a sore throat but i am being serious um yesterday on gary neville's the overlap we saw an interview with delhi formerly delhi alley now i knew he wanted to change his name years ago so why have the media still calling him delhi alley anyway we all know him as that delhi um fantastic young footballer from Milton Keynes, MK Dons, that Spurs, I'm a Spurs fan, um, brought a few years ago and under Pochettino, of course, was absolutely phenomenal in that team with Ericsson and, and Kane and Dembele and just, just, phenom just phenomenal stuff. Great young talent, right? And then he goes off the boil about, what, three, four years ago it starts? Where Pochettino goes under Marino, he's a bit, he has one good game. And then it goes off, then he doesn't get played. And then obviously Nuno and Conte coming in. He just doesn't seem to be able to get it. And I, 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 Amazon documentary come out and you get the scene with Mourinho calling him lazy, all that stuff. We'll cover all of that. And I think a lot of fans, including myself, thought, yeah, he's not, his head's, at least his head's not in the game. You know, at least he, he, something's going on, whether he's lazy or not, I don't know. And he goes to Everton, doesn't work, goes to Turkey, doesn't work. Comes back, gets injured. All right. And but now he's done an interview with Gary Neville on the overlap, and it was a phenomenal. I think it was in Manchester because I recognise the trams, uh, probably Junev's office in town there. Um, but it was one of the best interviews I've seen. I'll try. I'll try and remember to put the link in the description if you haven't seen it. I mean, phenomenal. Um, we'll go over some of the things that he covered, but yeah, he explains all all of that what's going on at those those times, at years, why there was a dip in form. And the first thing he hits really is that he's been in rehab in the States for six weeks through a sleeping pill addiction. Um, and apparently a lot of Premier League footballers and, and footballers are, are addicted to sleeping pills. And I, I didn't really know that uh, to calm in the first instance to wind down from the adrenaline from games and that kind of stuff or get some sleep the night before a big game. Obviously, you can get your recovery, but a lot of players are addicted, apparently. And it, it, even Gary Neville said in the 90s it was common, I think. Um, so that was obviously a big thing. You think, okay, we well, addicted to those recently. What happened in the years before? But really, he goes back to his childhood, right? And I knew there were issues with his biological family. I knew he was adopted. And I knew when he dropped the alley from his church, he was just deli. I thought it was a problem with his dad. I didn't really know too much or didn't look into it too much. Um, but it was seems to be with his mum and a friend of his mum. When he was six years old, he was uh, molested by the friend of his mum, who was an alcoholic. And he, he says, like, I don't blame my mum, even now. Um, I think the time, so it's like that happened at six. At seven, he started smoking. At eight, he was forced to sell drugs because he could hide. No one would stop a kid. Uh, riding around with his football hanging out of his bag but underneath he had drugs um sent to africa for discipline away from his family came back hung off a bridge at 11 i don't know really the context of that but some local guy hung him off a bridge um at 11 and then finally he was adopted at 12 and he got put into this really good family and he look, he became a professional footballer and not only that but one at a high level in the premier league so representing england so just that alone is amazing. Hopefully, I'll remember to touch on that again later. And then he does talk about, yeah, under under Maurizio Pochettino, those years, sort of 2014, 2019, I think, under uh, Spurs, he said he played well because Pochettino understood him as a person before the football. He said he cared about him as a person, right? And really got a bond with him. He said it was deeper than a manager and a player. I know it's like paternal, some sort of paternal thing, but it really got the best out of him. And when that he left and Marino came in, called him lazy, but that was blown up in the documentary. But apparently a week later, also in front of all these Amazon cameras, Marino apologized. But of course, that didn't get put in the documentary because it it makes for good clicks and all that stuff. But actually, that perception of him, his form going and him being called lazy on that documentary, I think affects the perception of, of other managers and players around the place and, and fans from all clubs. And I definitely was part of it as well. I did, yeah, I thought if he's not, you know, he's going around in his wacky outfits and stuff and he's not applying it on the pitch. 
So it just disappeared. This great young talent just suddenly dipped out of nowhere at like 24 years old. And he said he looked in the mirror and wanted to retire when he wasn't getting played and all that stuff. But he, he, the, the managers, I guess, Mourinho, Nuno, Conte, um, couldn't bond with they didn't care they were just kind of like play football or don't you know so it hasn't been laziness so there's been all sorts of rumors and tabloid stories about partying and drinking and gas and all this and he said a lot of it isn't what it seems and the, by the way the only reason he did the interview was because the tabloid newspaper had found out that he was in rehab and were gonna out him how low is that so he came and did this interview um, it's, it's so good, honestly. I'll, the overlap with Gary Neville and Deli Ali. Um, if you, uh, I'll try and put the link down there as well. And basically, he's held on to all this trauma over all these years, right? And all this messed up stuff. And as I get older, I start to understand. It really hit me, actually. I got a bit emotional watching it. And I'll tell you what, before I talk about that, when he left, I was like, yeah, you know, just go go and hopefully you do well somewhere else, but get out of the club, really. That was my view. And then he posted the goodbye story on Twitter and I watched it and it was all the memories and the time when I felt the most connected to the club and those years as well. And it, 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 that made me a little bit of emotional watching his goodbye video. And then yesterday, again, it caught me, it caught Gary Neville, it caught, um, you know, to watch him try and laugh it off with a nervous laugh and all that. That's, you know, that's me. That's my life. And he actually reminds me of a family member as well. I won't say who, but he reminds me of a, of a family member that I really like, obviously. And like he's in your family. More than that, but I don't want to say it. Um, so I've always had a bit of a soft spot for Delhi. And then, yeah, so he, I did forget my point that I'd started a few minutes ago. But he just got into why, yeah, he didn't feel that bond with the former coaches. So his form dipped. He couldn't, he just couldn't bring that out of himself. But when you think about all the things he's gone through, right, just becoming a good footballer would have been an achievement. But a, a pro at the highest level, playing for England, playing brilliantly for Spurs in that Champions League run, all that stuff, that is the achievement. Whatever he does now, we'll see. Again, we'll get onto that. But his, his biological family came out. They didn't want to know. He didn't really want to relationship with his dad. And he, he gets into the England squad and his biological family start going to the press and slagging off the adopted family that he said were amazing. I think his quote were, if, if God were to create people, it'd be these people. You know, they just provided him with a stable life. He had no rules. So at seven years old, he had his key and he was smoking, you know, just doing what he wanted. And people can hark back to those nostalgic days as well. But this seems a bit extreme. This seems a little bit extreme. But the fact that, yeah, the fact that he became a pro, to me, that's the achievement, right? And whatever whatever else he does now. I mean, he also said that he wouldn't be surprised if now his biological family come to the press again after this and probably, his quote was, say some more shit. You know, you can see it. He doesn't, hopefully he's not caring too much about his family, but his real family, but or his biological family. I'm sure he thinks of his adopted family as his real family. Um, but it's got to suck, right? It's got to suck. But yeah, it really, really did did get to me that one. It was a real, yeah, it made me understand a, a lot of stuff and, and think, you know, it's good to come out and talk about stuff, even if not publicly, then at least privately in therapy or something. I've never had therapy. The day I do that, <laughs> the day I do that, <laughs> we're in trouble. We'll have to make sure there's a doctor-client privilege. <laughs> We don't want any of that coming out. Um, but it is great to see that he is getting some help. And what he's talking about the future now, Sean Dyche, manager at Everton, has been helpful with him personally. Now, I don't know whether Everton will keep him. It, it, at the end of the day, footballers are assets. And if they haven't been performing, they're out the door. And I'm not sure he would. I don't know how he would fit well under a Dyche team, the way Dyche plays. I think he could do with an attacking team. But... Listen, whatever happens, I hope that he recovers from this injury now. He seems to be confident. He says, and he said a few times over the years, and that's why people have doubted him as well. It's like, I'm back, I'm training, I'm in it. But even he admits now he, he wasn't. He was kind of smiling through it. But he was at all this shit going on. Um, but he's talked about it now. He's gone away and got therapy and, and it, just issues around this, not just the sleeping pill stuff, all that childhood stuff. Um, and he says... What is he, 26, 27? He, he's, he says he's ready, and I hope he has a few good years as a footballer now. 
I don't know whether he'll reach that peak that he had over those young years, sort of 17 to 23, whatever it was. Um, it, but I don't think he has to. I think if he can get to a 70% or 65% of that, he can do a great job for, for a good team. And maybe he can do more, and I hope he does. I hope he does. I hope he proves everyone wrong and um, sticks two more fingers up to his biological family, you know? Absolute shithouses. So, yeah, that's just... I don't think there's anything else <clears throat> that I forgot that that cup was for. I didn't realise... Didn't realize it was, but there's Delhi happy. That those are the years that I remember. Um, and then we see him in the unhappy years. That looks like maybe a Mourinho COVID time with a haircut as well. That's him with Pochettino. Um, the guy he said of the best bond with. Now he's at Chelsea. Yuck. Um, and that's him yesterday in this uh, conversation. They're still in the wacky outfits there, Delhi. But all respect, all respect um, to you, man. So yeah, that that. Different one, different episode, a little bit longer than the normal topical ones. But yeah, I just wanted to get your attention to it if you haven't seen it. And I hope every football fan um, or anyone else that's out having issues like that go, goes and watches it and gets something out of it and, and maybe realise that everyone's got something going on, right? People can fuck up. This is me days after going after like newsreaders and stuff. <laughs> but in Della's case, it's been an ongoing thing for a few years. Um, and then obviously it's coming back now from like 20, 20, 21, 22 years ago. Um, so that would have been what, like early 2000s when he's a kid. Jesus. Yeah, he was so good, so young. That's where you forget he's still young. He's still only 26, 27 around there. Um, he could put another five years in as a pro, you know, and see where he is. And I just wish him the best. That's it. So I think that'll do for the last rights. Um, I'm feeling a little bit unwell, thinking about going to see Mission Impossible, spread some of this lurgy around. <laughs> um, but yeah, I hope you're having a great Friday. I'll be back with more nonsense soon, trying to sort out some podcast episodes. I am actually doing the admin now. Just relax, right? Billy Wayne Davis will be on soon, um, as will some other comedians as well. But um, yeah, these topical shows, I'm enjoying doing them. I hope you're enjoying watching some of them. If you don't like it, scroll on by. Scroll on by, baby. I did a little video on... Uh, I think I put it on TikTok and some of these these idiots, you know, with these usernames were just like, you're a dickhead, you know. Yeah. Well, I'm not. What you, what do you think you're going to get out of it? One, you're just boosting the little algorithm anyway, so more people see it. And secondly, all I'm going to do is like it and reply, thanks, mate. Thanks, mate. Don't you thank me. Thanks again. You know, I'm a happy guy when it comes to that. It doesn't really worry about it, but uh, it, it doesn't worry about it. I'm not on it. Call yourself a he. At least, hang on, but uh, there we go. I had to ruin, I had to ruin the relatively serious episode, right? Let me have a sip of water. But if you made it this far, thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you very much um, for sticking through it and drop a subscribe if you like. And yeah, hopefully I'll be back with more stuff maybe over the weekend. There'll be some shorts going up, all that kind of stuff as well. And uh, yeah, hope you have a good good weekend. If not. Um, yeah, if you're addicted to any 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 gump like that, or you're having some issues, you, you got some shit you need to clean up out your head. Consider talking about it. That's what that's what I would say. Um, I'm yet to do. I do it on a, actually. I do it on a small level. There there are old episodes of this on YouTube where it's just a drinking session for five hours, and then I'm crying about my family. So go back and try and find those if you want. <laughs> After half a bottle of whiskey, that's how I've done therapy. But maybe one day, maybe when I'm like 55, I'll actually go and see a therapist and, and go, oh, why didn't I do this? Because I'm, I'm slow buying a spare phone charger. I'm slow buying a second pair of jeans. Like, why didn't I do this before? This is great. So imagine getting like shit out of my head, <laughs> how that's going to feel. I don't know. Until then, it's going to be whiskey and tears on the Internet. Have a great weekend again. The longest goodbye keeps continuing drop a subscribe if you like and uh yeah have a nice time <laughs>